This video is on the maintenance of the speed and distance logs that are used on the ships to measure the speed of the vessel and the distance traveled as well as the International Maritime Organization or IMO performance standards of these bridge equipment. Now if this is the first video you are watching in this series, I will advise you to watch the other two videos that I made on the different kind of speed logs that are there on ships, the principle of working behind it. So I talked about the electromagnetic logs and the Doppler logs. And in the description below, I'll provide you with a link to those videos as well. So my advice to you would be to watch those videos. The reason I don't combine everything together is because the video becomes too long uh, for people to watch and then it be becomes a bit of a, a bit, bit boring, right? So that's why I've distributed this topic into three separate videos. So this video will only focus on the maintenance of speed logs on ships and the IMO performance standards. So if I have to talk about the maintenance of the speed logs, uh, we have to remember that the displace unit does not require any kind of periodical maintenance since the unit has no movable mechanism except perhaps the analog meter and the magnetic counter. Uh, the unit should be kept clean and free from dust and the connection is checked for tightness from time to time. Just note that the front panel is generally made of acrylic resin which can easily be scratched. Therefore only wipe with a soft cloth. Do not use any solvent such as thinner or acetone. On the LCD screen or similar units, just check uh, as for uh, as you would for any other computer monitor. Check periodically for any leak, kind of leakage of water at the flange and the gasket of the transducer assembly. Uh, in the dry dock, you should check the window and the surrounding of the transducer or the sensor when the ship is in dry dock. Remove any marine growth from the transducer sensor assembly. Mostly new transducers are of suitable surface, not needing any coating, but some of the older ones you may clean and paint the surface of the transducer with anti-falling paint to a suggested thickness as advised by the manufacturers. Do not touch any of the electrical parts inside the unit if the speed indication is normal and do not try to fix anything if you are not the expert in it. So try to get a expert electrical technical officer on board or a qualified technician from ashore. Uh, although it is possible to correct a fixed error caused by the misalignment of the transducer at installation by adjusting the controls inside the unit. But since this system indicates the so-called water speed originally, check the error caused by the current of a tide. Alright, in terms of accuracy considerations, uh, generally logs are very reliable, but you must understand that speed measurement errors can arise and under what circumstances the log is likely to be inaccurate. So ship speed is difficult to measure accurately, but what kind of accuracy do we need? So speed information used for dead reckoning navigation may be satisfactory if accurate to about 0.25 over knots, depending on the time period and what position fixing is available. Speed information uh, used as input data to true motion radars, collision threat assessment radars, integrated navigation systems should be within 0.2 of a knot or better but when it comes to docking very large vessels especially vessels of more than 50,000 gross tonnage or carrying out very sensitive operations of our offshore and underwater operations very high accuracy is required. And then I'll discuss what are some of the reasons because of which the accuracy of the speed measurement is affected and this is particularly for electromagnetic logs uh, that rely on the flow of water across its sensors. So the first reason is distortion of water flow which refers to the distortion of the water passing the hull because of the hull shape which causes a potential flow field. Now position of the sensor in this case becomes very important. The flow pattern may change with the draft speed entry and thus errors becomes variable. The second one refers to the viscosity of the water uh, which results in water being carried along with the hull by friction which is called the boundary layer effect. Now this boundary layer may be a few centimeters at the bow of a ship but more than a meter at the stern. Some of the logs may have to extend beyond the boundary layer to ensure that the sensor is in clear water. They then may have to be retractable to avoid damage. Alright, then we have the third reason is the disturbed water flow which refers to the water flow that gets disturbed around the appendages of the ships such as bilge keels, anodes and plate edges etc. The fourth one refers to the shallow water effect or also called the squat effect. So especially when the vessel is in shallow water, the, 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 it changes the water flow around the hull, particularly underneath the vessel. It also affects the actual speed of the ship over the ground because uh, as the ship goes through the shallow water, because of a vacuum that is created, a ship kind of tends, tends to sink. Uh, this effect is called the squat. Then the water below it kind of speeds out. Uh, when it speeds up, that's not the actual speed of the vessel and that may trick the sensor into picking up a speed of the vessel, water flowing across it to be higher than the actual speed of the vessel. All right, the, the, this effect may start to become significant if the vessel is at full speed and the underkill clearance value is less than the draft value. 
right then the fourth and the, sorry the fifth and the sixth ones are referring to the average motion errors and oscillator errors so the average motion errors uh, the log is designed to measure speed along uh, the width track axis that is the course and in the horizontal plane so if the ship's uh, attitude deviates from these then a speed error is introduced such a, so movements such as trimming pitching and yawing cause these errors but the effects are normally very small leeway errors can be significant uh, oscillator errors oscillator errors uh, so instantaneous readings may be in error when pitching rolling heaving and surging so in pitching for example the log sensor is mounted well below the pitching center and probably well forward or well aft of it the pendulum effect means considerable linear expression of the sensor causing errors which can be significant and finally we have the maneuvering errors which are can be significant especially for example in the input to an arpa or radar during a high speed turn in a close quarter situation so high speed turns will significantly affect speed log readings because the data fed into an arpa radar radar will result in erroneous target motion calculations so remember to look out the window and don't rely solely on the on the electronic equipment because when the vessel is making a high speed turn the flow of water across the sensor of the speed log uh, can be uh, varying at varying speeds because of which the speed log gets confused and can't measure the the speed of the vessel accurately and finally we have the motor mass movement and this refers to the effects of the currents and tidal streams uh, on the ship's speed so if the current is following the ship uh, current is following the doppler log may think that the vessel is doing a much higher speed than it what it is or if the current is coming from in front of the vessel then the doppler log may think that the vessel is slower or faster than what it actually is supposed to be all right then we move on to the international maritime organization performance standards or the imo performance standards uh, now devices measuring speed and distance over the ground should meet the performance standards in water of depth greater than 2 meters beneath the field uh, speeds uh, may be presented in either analog or digital form where a digital display is used its incremental steps should not exceed 0.1 of a knot and analog display should be graduated at at least every 0.5 of a knot to be marked with figures at at least every 5 Errors in the measured and indicated speed when the ship is operating free from shallow water effect and from the effects of wind, sea, bottom tide, current, and tide should not exceed the following. For a digital display, 2% of the speed of the ship or 0.2 knots, whichever is greater. For an analog display, 2.5% of the speed of the ship or 0.25 knots, whichever is greater. And for output data transmission, sorry, <laughs> sorry, 2% uh, of the speed of the ship or 0.2 knots, whichever is greater. Performance of the equipment should be such that it will meet the requirements of these standards when the ship is rolling up to plus minus 10 degrees and pitching up to plus minus 5 degrees. All right, finally, for future considerations, new acoustic modulation type logs have been trialed. The principle is based on the computerized calculations of phase shifts in the transmitted echo. Uh, please be aware of the following as more and more equipment is being fed data from the GPS units. Standalone GPS is reasonably accurate and provides speed over the ground even in deep water, which is not the case with the Doppler log. And speed displayed is the motion of the GPS area because GPS areas are situated high up on a mast, they will be influenced by the oscillatory motion. Where high accurate, highly accurate data is required, a compensated unit must be fitted to rectify the axial motion of the area. So basically, uh, since the last few years, due to the advent of cheap and effective computing processing power, a new type of log has been trialed, which does not fall into the category of either the electromagnetic log or Doppler log category. They are termed simply as electronic acoustic logs, as there are few processors with memory and usual modern computery circuitry to estimate the speed both through the water and over the ground. So these work on acoustic modulation principle where the sound echo is received by two transducers, specifically placed at a known four and a half distance, and the phase of the echo wave difference is used for speed estimation. The speed is estimated from the fixed distance between sensor elements divided by the estimated time delay from acoustic correlation where two signals are compared by shifting one relative to the other in time and choosing the time shift where the best match is found. Somewhat very similar used by GPS receivers to get the time difference between the code received of a satellite and its replica in the receiver system memory. These electronic acoustic logs are capable of giving both speed through water and speed over ground as they, don't, as they do not rely on the passage of water past a sensor but rather on the reception of the echo. So I hope this lecture was short and sweet and it helped you to understand the maintenance and the IMO performance standards of the speed and distance logs. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon with my next video.